Welcome to the Liberated Investor Advantage podcast with your host, Doug Alden. In this podcast, we help you deal with and understand the uncertainties of investing and financial planning. Join us for this journey as your host, Doug Alden, teaches you how to move forward no matter what life or the markets throw your way. Hello and welcome to the Liberated Investor Advantage with Doug Alden. Today, Doug has a special guest and that is Charlie Stoll. Charlie is a money manager and an advisor with Winning Points Advisors down in Boca Raton, Florida. And I'm already jealous because obviously he's in much warmer weather than I am and probably <laughs> yeah. than, than Doug is as well. So Yeah, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> Doug, this is this is going to be a great podcast. I know that already. I know that we have a bit of housekeeping because you're going to be talking about investments. We need to have a disclosure right off the bat. So why don't you go ahead and take that over and then get started. Sure. You uh, Thanks, Eric. And uh, thank you, Charlie, for joining us today. Um, what I wanted to do, usually this disclaimer is read at the bottom of the page. It's in fine print and you can't deal with it. But today we're going to be talking about equities. And I just want to make sure everybody understands this that tunes this podcast in. This is not an offer to buy or sell securities. No investment process is free of risk. And there are no there is no guarantee that the investment process or the investment opportunities referenced here today will be profitable. Past performance is not indicative of current or future performance and is not a guarantee. The investment opportunities referenced in this podcast may not be suitable for all investors. And we talked about that before, Doug, really. I mean, it's, yes, but- talk to a professional. If you have questions, if you have questions about anything that we discuss on the podcast or anything that you hear on the news or in the paper or from your buddy, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Talk right. to a professional. Please don't go out and just buy things just because you think, oh, that sounded great. Yeah, anyway. Right. All right. Hey, Charlie. Good morning. Yes. Thank you for joining Good morning. Us. It's a beautiful, warm day down here. Oh, quit it. <laughs> <laughs> it's freezing up here. Okay, I'll, I'll get off the weather topic. And, and Doug, you know, you brought Charlie on. I know you've known him for a very long time. What are you guys right. talking about today? I'm, I'm here to learn. Well, uh, actually, uh, we just came back from a ski trip. So uh, I'm a little warmer and Charlie's a lot warmer. But we had a good time in Whitefish, Montana, but we're back at it today. Nice. What I want to talk about... You know, I've been talking about this enhanced retirement for several podcasts now, and I wanted to bring Charlie in because in- inevitably there's going to be a portion of the retirement package, whether it's all of it or some of it, it's going to be involved in the equities market. Now, Charlie's been in business. Charlie, how long have you been around? Uh, well, I've been around a lot longer than I've been in business, but I've been in business uh, uh, 41 years. Yeah, forty-one years, and and we we how did we meet? We met in uh, uh, it took us uh, we were living pretty close to each other. Didn't even realize it down in Florida before I moved to North Carolina. But I went to a conference in San Francisco in nineteen eighty nine, and that's where we met. So we had to go all the way across the country, and uh, I don't know if you want to pick up on that story. It was a great conference, and we it. We did we did a lot, but we got together and we started a study group, and we started talking about investments. And pick it up from there, Charlie. I know that you know we went through a lot of bear markets up and down. We went through the one in 2000, the one in 2008. So tell us what your thoughts were as a professional money manager going through that. What were you thinking? What was, what was driving you? Why would you want to do what you do? Well, people make investments uh, usually, especially 41 years later, now that I've had a lot of experience in that and a lot of seen a lot of different things. People generally, regardless of what they say, they're making investments to provide some kind of future income. It's, uh, are we saving for retirement? Well, that's saving for retirement so that when I retire, I'll get an income off these investments. Am I saving for something else, a rainy day or disability or something, well, generally and unilaterally you know, and almost exclusively, it's to generate a future income. And and over the years, I've been an equity-based guy. Uh, when I was uh, 14 years old, I, uh, my grandfather and I were, were fans. I was, I was much more a fan of his. And I asked him for some career advice, and he said I should get in this business or I should be a banker. And I was only 14. Uh, so I figured, well, banking sounds boring, and so here we are uh, this many years later. turns out some people say I have a skill at it. And so 
but over the years, I've watched uh, as these equities, and I know, Doug, you speak of this often, these equity securities that we buy, I've watched them not only go up in price, even though they do go down in price some days, but I've watched the dividends on them grow up Im- immensely. Uh, uh, constantly, these big companies, uh, although there are exceptions, these companies will, will buy their own stock back and they'll raise their dividends. And so if you look back over the 40 plus years I've been doing this, the best place, the only place that really has yielded compounded rates of return that on dividends, not to mention the values gone up tremendously too, has been the has been the equity markets. And I think today, more so than ever before, given the low or zero interest rates around the world, this continues to be the reason why the stock market is so popular. It's so talked about. It's so uh, uh, what's the word? It's so popular. It would uh, and uh, uh, is because it pays a bigger dividend than the than the ten year treasury pays, and so yeah, if you're looking me, uh, to invest, let me, go ahead. let me just interject here a little bit. Uh, we we both are advocates, and uh, we have a coach called his name's Nick Murray, and we give him a lot of credit. But he was talking about the S and P dividend, how it's gone from let's say 1976 to current day. You you remember that uh, exactly sure, what sure. it was? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it. Uh, I, who knows when somebody's going to be listening to the podcast, but it's gone up, uh, and I'm sure that you can share it with anybody that emails you and wants that particular information, but it's gone up uh, dramatically, uh, mm-hmm. life-changingly for those people who participated in it. So, And those generally have been uh, our clients and your clients and long-term investors buying quality companies and, and letting the company do their thing, uh, make money, pay their employees. Uh, pay dividends, buy back stock when it's appropriate, make acquisitions and so forth. And this has simply worked. Um, And I don't know any reason why it wouldn't in the future, but that's why I enjoy this business so much because um, we have a solution and the solution works over decades and decades and decades. And it's part of our society. Um, uh, I hope that answers your question in some way. No, it does. Uh, Thank you so much. But um, as you and I have gone through uh, our history together, We've we've kind of talked about a lot of different things. I mean, you got your name, Winning Points Advisors, because of the particular style in which you invest. Um, after the the uh, the crash of two thousand eight, uh, there was something that you were working on that you've really steadily improved over the years. You want to talk about that a little bit? Well, I've always been a big reader. Uh, this is a fascinating business. It's intellectually intellectually challenging at every possible level. Uh, there's a million opinions out there every day of supposedly smart people, and many of them are smart. But uh, I read the books, I read the annual reports, I read what's going on behind the background. And and starting in, well, starting when I first got in the business, but uh, what particularly uh, changed uh, the way we do things was reading the uh, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren Buffett's, of course, the theoretically the best investor in the history of man, uh, his annual report starting in 2006, seven, and so forth. And he, he being the Let's call him the smartest investor we know to emulate. And most people, as we've talked about so many times, Doug, they think, hey, I want to be like Warren Buffett. I'm just going right. to buy the stocks that he's buying. And they have no idea how much smarter he is than that. Um, he, it's not – Warren makes a lot of money by buying the right stocks and holding on to them and letting the dividends grow and letting the management do its thing. Yes, all the things we've talked about, Warren's right there with us. But the way he structures it and the things he does around it have really added on a tremendous amount of value to to the holders and the shareholders of Berkshire Hathaway. So uh, in, in, in uh, 2007, uh, uh, he announces to the public, it, he didn't really, you had to read the fine print of the report, that he had made some deals with some European banks to make a promise to them in exchange for a lot of money that the stock market basically a long time in the future would be higher than it is today. And he uh, he had the deal was done before anybody knew about it, and he raised about four and a half no, billion dollars. Let me dollars ask you. Let me this. clarify that. Let me clarify. Sorry to interrupt. For a lot of money, you said he did it for a lot of money. Which way did that money flow? That that money flew into his bank account. About four and a half billion dollars or so was the money. So the the banks in Europe paid him four and a half billion dollars to promise them that the if the market was lower than it was then 20 years hence he would make up the difference and he get he gets to keep the four and a half billion dollars tax free until such time as as the transactions over with and so here's wow. Warren the best money manager in the world he's got now four and a half billion dollars in cash uh, tax free sort of until until the transactions closed and all he has to do is promise these banks that if the market is lower 20 years hence 
uh, he'll make up he'll make up the difference. So if the market was four and a half billion dollars lower twenty years hence, he would break even, except for the time value of money. And if the market didn't go down at all, he got to keep the whole four and a half billion. And so we, I looked at this uh, from our or my investor's point of view, and I say, here's Warren. He has confidence in the underlying value of what's going on, not just in the American stock market, but in in just the equity business itself. He has confidence that people go to work, they're going to work for their company, they're going to make more money. The chief executives, as spicy as some of them are, are going to continue to want to get their bonuses and get that stock price up. And this is just the way this works. And so he was confident of that enough to say, hey, Mr. Banks, I'll take your four and a half billion on the promise that these guys will just do better than today and it will give them 20 years. And so we developed an, a, a strategy for my clients at the time that, uh, and what this was, it was additional income. And we're generally income-based people. We, My clients, right. uh, many of them are retired or looking for it. They want income. So this is a way to generate more income from our portfolio. And uh, the, we developed this strategy. It's a, a, a tiny bit more complicated than we can get into in a short uh, podcast today. But right. we developed right. the strategy doing what Buff Warren did. We can't do it the same way Warren did, and certainly not in the same size that he did. But we can emulate that strategy in order to take our confidence in how this system works. And, and what this world is like, really, uh, not what you read on the evening news or on the political channels, but how this world really works and turn that into an additional income uh, for our clients. And it's worked quite well. All right. Let me let me clarify a little bit. Let's just make sure because, you know, we're talking about something that's a little different than what you would hear on the what I call the investment pornography channels. Um, you, you, you buy companies in your portfolio that are structurally really sound. They've had a history of increasing their dividend payouts. They're buying back stocks, their their stock. And let me just clue the investor, the listener in. When a company buys back its own stock, that takes part of the stock out of the market. So there's less stock to deal with in the open market, which generally makes the value of that stock go up. So you've got dividends coming in. You've got growth of the asset itself, and you've got now you're talking about some extra income. Where's that coming from, Charlie? Well, it comes from uh, we, with this transaction that we set up, just like Warren did, is in the options market. So this okay. is a, a market that's not the stock market; it's an options market. And it by using a series of options, we feel that we can generate, and we have so far, uh, uh, no guarantees of success, as you mentioned in your disclaimer. We can generate right. about an extra seven percent in cash flow off these assets. Uh, regardless of the names of the companies that are involved, they're not necessarily important. It could all be in one name. But regardless of that, uh, we can generate about a 7% uh, cash flow off these investments and also, in the same time, help potentially protect the portfolio from going down in case there is a serious market crash that happens very quickly, Fast. like a 9-11 right. or a 1987 or something like that, which we all live through. Because sometimes things just go bad quick on their way to getting better. And yeah, okay. it's right. they do. handy for our clients. It's yeah, it's, they do. It's we've been through this. <laughs> yeah, so they many do, times. Charlie. <laughs> and it's handy for our clients to be able to know that one, they have a lot of extra cash potentially in their account because of these options, and number two, that potentially, not guaranteed, our client, our options that they own uh, could potentially really help them out a lot if it happens in a fast ugly way again like 9 11 1987 things like that 2008 mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh, we have that ancillary protection built in warren didn't do all this stuff warren didn't have to he has the money um he we but we have to because our clients are not warren buffett so we have to have these ancillary processes in there but as a unit as a structure as a as a as a strategy that's what we try and generate because people want income off their money and the more income they can get off the money the more they can save that and reinvest that and that speeds up this process because people basically probably don't save enough money and that's one reason yeah, our society that's right. is getting that's right you know the rich are getting so rich and the middle class aren't doing as well because they're having to pay for their retirement or pay for their expenses out of some of their earnings the rich they have plenty and so they just compound it all and right, the math right. is, you know supports this uh, so we this our strategy isn't going to solve this for the world um, and we're not running for office but this strategy can help solve it for our clients uh, at least move it in the right direction yeah let me tell the listeners i 
uh, I'm personally involved in this uh, with myself and my wife and my family money as well as our clients. I've transitioned using Charlie's um, um, investment strategy, and it has really increased the income from which my clients can enjoy. Uh, this estimated 7% is not a pie-in-the-sky thing. This has been happening now. I've been involved with it for probably almost six years when we finally got together. We actually met in Chicago uh, at another industry meeting, and Charlie and I locked ourselves into the room uh, before the meeting started, and we hammered out a deal where we could join forces and try to uh, maybe even improve on it more. But it has worked. Now, let me tell you about this extra income. This income, it comes in sporadically. It doesn't come in systematically. It depends on some of the vehicles that Charlie is using in his portfolio. Now, Charlie, talk about, you know, you mentioned the word options. And that scares people. I, I lost money in options. I, I don't like money. You know, my point is that you don't lose money in options. The option doesn't lose the money. The money manager loses the money. And so go into a little bit about some of the common, ordinary, everyday financial vehicles that are used throughout the world that you've incorporated into your trading strategy. Well, uh, there's so many directions to go with that question. Uh, sure. uh, we use, uh, we buy the underlying stocks. That's the stocks you've mentioned, large companies operating globally, usually uh, increasing earnings, increasing dividends, increasing stock buybacks. You know, J.P. Morgan would be an example. It's a great company. Mm -hmm. It's doing very well. Um, and many others. There's many other companies. I don't mean to pick out J.P. Morgan. Um, and we use them as the base. That's where the money goes. That's where the money's invested. They, This company's been doing fantastic. I said many others, Apple included. So uh, we buy those things, and then we sell Generally, we sell these options against those. That's where, like Warren did in 2007, we sell these options. We, we bring money in. The, most people, and I love it when people say they won't do it because they've always lost money in options, because I can, I have a list of people I've talked to somewhere around here uh, over my 40 years that they won't buy a stock because everybody loses money in the stock market. Well, yeah, right. That's uh, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> or the real estate market. You know, I'll never buy real yeah. estate because it always goes down yeah. and doesn't work for me. Or the, uh, and more commonly and more appropriately, diamonds and gold and coins and all that stuff. If the investor isn't doing it right, if the investor isn't going into it with the right perspective and the right knowledge and the right use, any financial instrument or investment is going to go could potentially go south on them. That's right. Especially That's if right. they don't have a long term holding vehicle. It's just it's it's wonderful. And if it wasn't that way, it wouldn't work. If the stock right. market was so easy and, and equities were so easy and so non volatile and so uh, uh, acceptable to everybody, there would be no money market funds. There would be no CDs. There would be no uh, fixed annuities. There would be none of that stuff because people would. What, why that? Why would you put your money into a CD when you could, you know, buy a the S and P five hundred at almost a two percent yield, which is much more than your CD will ever be, and plus that yield's likely to go up. And so the reason people don't is because oh, my grandfather lost money in the stock market or and whatever. And so that fear. Uh, is the thing that makes it all work. And we need that to be out there. Not that I want people to lose money, but this isn't a, and in the investment business, not everybody gets to make all the money. And uh, it's the, uh, it's some people do and some people don't. And we like to be among the, try to be among the people who do. Yeah, it's really, it's really the long term investor that makes the money. Someone who doesn't get scared because of uh, uh, how things go, you know, in the short term. Um, I know in 2008, I've had several clients that said, I, I remember one, it was kind of interesting. Um, he came into the office and uh, uh, just run a little bit with this, Charlie, for a second. He came into the office after the, the, bull mar or the bear market of 2002 and 2003, and he wanted to get out, and I convinced him to stay in. So the, the, the bear market of 2008 came in and it dropped, and all of a sudden, the I'm getting the, uh, the replacement papers. You know, the money's moving to some other guy. And, you know, I finally call him up and I ask him what's what's going on. He says, well, he says, we wanted to get out of the market when last time you talked us out of it. We're getting out of the market now. I said, Alan, you know, this thing is temporary. It will continue to grow. It will never hit, never hit the high in my lifetime. It'll never get back to where it was. I love it when I hear that. Yeah, I had a hard time not sending him the headline. 
a few short years later, I think it was 2011, when it finally surpassed uh, the previous all-time high. But anyway, all that said means this, and I, I just want to kind of keep it keep it so that the people listening can get a real idea of the flavor of what's going on, and that is Charlie's sitting down there in Boca Raton, Puerto Now, you have a staff, right? You, you have a staff. You have uh, sure, uh, sure. money managers that help you. Um, I, I've met them. Uh, they've both been with you for a long period of time, kind of a ton of experience. Let me just uh, give you a, 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 a commercial for you. Uh, his webpage is winningpointsadvisors.com. You can reach Charlie at the winningpoints.com on his email if you have a question. He's really good about that. He's open. He's someone who's available and really transparent. I think everything you're doing, Charlie, is, is uh, I, I even had a client that turned into a client of mine go all the way down to Florida and interview you. Do you remember that day, that, that guy? Sure, sure. Yeah. He's an engineer. Engineers love me. Yeah. Because I'm not a geek to them. <laughs> right, right, right. You, 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 you can get along with engineers. <laughs> I'd have a little trouble with that, but that's okay. All right. So um, the what means putting the portfolio together, making it available. I think I don't know if you want to talk about the mutual funds. I know you've created some mutual funds for – People who have IRAs that would be able to participate in this program. You want to talk about that? Mention those at least. We are an investment advisory firm. We're not a mutual fund uh, sales office. Uh, we created our mutual fund family, uh, small mutual fund family, to be able to use in our clients' portfolios. They're available in other venues, but you'll find no advertising or, or marketing about them. That's really not the business we're in. We're using them very effectively ourselves and just have them open to the public because that's the nature of them. So, uh, the, uh, these mutual funds allow our process, what we do with the options and the things we learned from Warren Buffett and so forth, to be put inside IRA accounts. And so right. uh, what, what Warren does and what we do, it by itself cannot go inside an IRA account, but the mutual fund that does it can easily go inside of IRA account. So we created those vehicles uh, for that express purpose. And we've now our, our usage of them has expanded somewhat, but they're, they've done well, uh, we think. We're proud of them. And uh, they exist out there as a tool for, I know you use them sometimes and other people to, so mm -hmm. that this strategy and this, this uh, can end up in an IRA account and be legal. I, th I really appreciate uh, you coming on. We're going to have to do this again because I think what Charlie does is very, very complicated but simple if once you begin to see it and once you get it. I, I love what you said. People invest for income. And income is the driver of all that you're doing. Um, not only do the dividends come in and the S&P 500 dividends, but this extra cash flow is on top of it. Uh, I use it to help people uh, finance their estate plans. Uh, Charlie, some of your clients are using it for some pretty unique things. We got about two or three minutes here. You want to just jump on that for a minute? Well, with this extra cash flow we generate uh, can be used for anything the client wants, uh, pay off uh, debt, uh, build a dock, uh, buy a boat, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, enhancing their estate plan, uh, putting kids through college, whatever. I mean, it's not our money. It's their money, and they get to spend it any way they like. Uh, and, of course, we would prefer that most people save it because – that's kind of the business win because it won't generate much income if you've spent it. So the objective, the, the design was to save this money in such a way uh, uh, and the client gets to pick the way that it does the most good for the, for the estate plan and for the financial plan going forward. It's, it's their money to use. And so, uh, Eric, you might even want to use your money if you so choose to move into this to buy a, a snowblower. So, um, I, I don't <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I own one. Thank you. <laughs> oh, do you? Okay. Well, you, Sorry. you can buy two. You can have two in your garage, right? Yeah. Get yeah. your wife out there on that one, too. Oh, yeah. I'll tell her you said that. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, uh, we're, we're, I think we're coming to a close. Uh, Eric, you want to uh, say anything? I mean, you've been patiently listening. You got any wild thoughts or excited about it or what? Well, you, you gave the website, and, and that's the biggest thing. Uh, if we have contact information for Charlie, I, I want to be able to put that in the show notes because – you basically created more questions than answers for me, right? I mean, I, listening to this, there's so many things that, that you just sparked within me. And I think every listener out there, 
Uh, I find it very interesting, and it's something that I haven't heard of before in, in a lot of ways, uh, what, what you guys discussed today. So, uh, yeah, I, I would love for them, the audience, that is, to, to have the opportunity to to reach out to either one of you to speak to you. So we'll, we'll put uh, Charlie's contact information in the show notes as well. Doug, why don't you okay. go ahead and put your phone number out there real quick. Sure. Yeah. And probably the best thing to do, probably the best thing to do for people listening to the podcast is, is to contact me, uh, sure. you know, Charlie's money. He's got clients all over the world and, uh, uh, he's a busy guy. I had one, one, we hired somebody to try to help us with marketing and he occasionally said that trying to keep track of Charlie, like trying to keep track of a ghost because he's around he just he's all over the continent all over yeah, the the uh the planet anyway my telephone number uh for those that are listening is uh, 828-668-0665 uh, my email doug at the liberated investor.com and my web page doug at the liberated investor excuse me the liberated investor.com has all these podcasts on it has all information on it and a little bit more about my strategies for building wealth Remember, I, I want to transition the client from a traditional, conventional retirement approach to an enhanced approach and how I can make all my assets much more effective and efficient mm -hmm. and providing extra ability for clients to withstand market declines and to be able to take advantage of other uh, not traditionally non-producing, non-income producing assets to provide income. So that's what we're all about. We want to make sure that you, the money keeps coming when the body gives out. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Doug, thank you so much for bringing Charlie on. Charlie, thank you so much for being a fantastic guest. And uh, I, I hope you stay warm. I'm a little concerned about your health and, and weather <laughs> down there. So <laughs> please stay warm. And Thanks, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And to all the listeners, thank you for listening to the Liberated Investor Advantage podcast with Doug Alden. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Doug comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your friends and family. Again, thanks for listening today. For everyone at the Liberated Investor Advantage, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Liberated Investor Advantage podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available.